Hello everybody. Welcome back to the Art and Outdoor Life with John here. So today what we're going to be doing is a beginner's guide, a beginner's tutorial on just painting a simple camping scene with the little fly fisherman in the water and so I'm putting some cerulean blue up there and I'm just going to dab in a little bit of clouds for now. Now in this painting what I want to do is I want to exaggerate some things. I think it's good practice to exaggerate things especially when you're starting out. Um, because the further on you go down, uh, you'll start the more with the more practice you'll start getting used to what you're painting. And I think starting out with the exaggeration is the way to go. That's that's how I feel. So what I mean by exaggeration is uh, make things a little bit bigger uh, than you know than what you might expect. You know, this is the fast and loose technique. So, you know, things are moving quickly. If you were to sit here and do this and uh, try to make it very detailed and perfect, uh, but not perfect, but detailed and, you know, more realistic, I guess is the word, um, then it would take you some time and some dry off time and, you know, pre-planning and everything but we're doing the fast and loose technique here so just follow along uh, this is raw umber I just want to make a little ground there after putting in two trees okay now I want the foreground and middle ground to be a lake and uh, but we got to have uh, you know we got to have some ground and again this is a camping scene so with the liner no or the liner brush and uh, or rigger brush just kind of move out some of the paint just give it some twigs okay just zing them and zag them and don't have to be perfect because the foliage, the tree, uh, the leaves will actually cover that up. But, you know, I mean, it's always good to work on these uh, whenever you're doing trees. Even if you know they're going to get covered up, it's good to work on them because it's, you're practicing at the same time. Uh, my apologies about the glare. I have to change the lighting in my room. But um, we will get to that. As you can see, uh, there's quite a lot of paint on the tree right now. Um, on all those, on those three trees, there's quite a bit of paint on them. Uh, that's because my brush was wet. Uh, my hake brush. So we want a basic scene. We don't want to make, you know, nothing spectacular here. And what another thing that we want to do is we want to exaggerate everything. For the most part, um, it's loose, very loose. So by exaggerating again, um, it, it is a part of the fast and loop tech loose technique but uh, it also helps you know further down the road uh, we go then you know you can tighten up some of those very loose and exaggerated uh, you know figures and uh, objects so scraping the bark on the tree um, giving it more character, some texture, putting some 
rocks down below the tree and over on this the other tree the same way too. I found my car. Did you see that? <laughs> um, by the way, next week or this coming Friday, I'm not sure if my second part of my last video will be uh, posted. I'm not sure about that. Okay. So if, it, if you haven't seen my last video, go check it out. Uh, it, if you stopped somewhere in the middle and you didn't see the end of it, uh, the end of my last video would probably uh, shock you because I actually went to like four or five different scenes on one piece of paper and then I ended up, it ended in, uh, instead of being wintertime, it ended being... Uh, summertime at nighttime in the mountains so if you haven't seen the last video please check it out thank you okay so now we've uh, kind of made our lake a little bit or our pond a little bit more uh, recognizable so now we put a little bit of blue on here actually green um, Sometimes when, well, when you're putting the blue on and, the, okay, the blue in the background, the sky, and it's wet, and you're putting green on, they will mix, and you'll get an aqua, uh, bluish, greenish color. And that's good for some things, but I don't like them in the tr trees, personally. But uh, this is just a good idea, so you just kind of put the green on there. And like I was saying earlier, it'll help cover up some of the branches, some of the twigs. Um, but it's always good to work on your twigs when you're doing these things anyways. And like I said in a previous video, I love putting uh, yellow on. Um, not all of my trees, but some of them. The yellow, this is a uh, lemon yellow. And uh, the lemon yellow really is bright, but it, it really makes those trees look nice. You know, I mean, it, it really makes them look nice. That's why I like that. I like uh, lemon yellow. You know, uh, there's different kinds of yellows. but So we're using lemon yellow here. And, okay, we want to make this a, a camping scene. And I'm going to put a guy in there going fishing. Um, I will be doing some, uh, the next video that I do that I was telling you guys about. Okay, here we, we'll put a little bit of red there. Just red. You could put orange, whatever color. We want to make this a, just a, a tent right on the bank. Um, but yeah, in, in reference to the last video I did, I released, I will be showing you how to uh, paint people and that too as well. So now I want to get some trees in the background and if you remember me telling you uh, the darker the color the more up front they will seem to appear and they will push anything lighter back you know backwards as, as if you're looking at it so I'm still using that same green and I'm I actually put a little bit of a tiny bit of blue in there uh, and Payne's gray j just to kind of uh, darken it a little bit. Payne's gray is a neutral color. I make my own with cer cerulean blue and uh, a little bit of black. But I want to give it that, you know, so that you will know that there's forage in the back there. 
take my little credit card thingy and scrape it again. Now it looks like, okay, these trees are further back. That tree line is further back. I didn't want to come on very strong color with them. So that's kind of why I did that. And I wanted the tent to be bright and noticeable because this is a camping scene. Okay. And um, so the whole idea, and we are going to be using Chinese white again. And I exaggerate it. I will be exaggerating it here. Uh, but that's okay. Now here's the fan brush, and I'm using my own Payne's Gray. Okay. These fan brushes are amazing. I call them turkey tail brushes. That's just what I call them. They look like turkey tails. They do so many things. And whenever you're using these, it, you know, they don't hold much water, but if your paint that you dip it into has a lot of water on them, then you're going to get a lot of water. They grab things. They, they do all kinds of things, these brushes. So with the paints gray, I'm just kind of wanting to fill in this little pond. And now I really got some water going in here, literally on the paper. See it? Yeah. So it's getting dark and darker. You could see the green in there and even brown in there. And that's not what I was looking for, so let's do this, you know. One good way of checking out your colors before you put them on the paper is have an extra paper next to you so you could take your brush and your paint and stick it on the paper, and if that's the right color for you, then you could put it, apply it to your painting. Uh, I don't do that very often, so <laughs> uh, so I scraped it because I want to get this guy in. Uh, I just want to get his chest, is all, and I want him to stand out, man, woman. I, I want the figure here to stand out, so I'm using uh, a red color. It's on very thick. Now, even though it's supposed to be a pond, I still want my figure to be fly fishing. Okay. I guess this is where all the exaggeration comes in. So I put a little... Um, yellow ochre there. I want it like a straw hat. I'd make a little arm like that and bring down his uh, chest a little bit is and let's see while we're at it let's just put a little bit of blue in here dark blue so there's the opening to the tent and so you I was going to give him, I tried this before, and like I'm doing it now, it can work, but it just depends on how you do it. So now let's outline something here, um, like maybe a dock. I know I'm putting a lot of things into this little pond. Uh, my figure here has actually made actually made the pond look very small uh, let's try this fishing line now usually when I do these I kind of dot just dot the straight lines 
like I'll, I'll dot it like uh, to give the impression it's a straight line. Okay, that's his line in the water. He's holding his pole. Okay, I don't like the bottom of his uh, wade, waders or whatever, so we'll fix that. Get wet it a little bit. Still not the color I'm looking for. Maybe try this. Uh, still not happy with that. Okay. As long as I keep the fishing line and the main body of what I want on the figure there, we're okay. We're doing okay. So, how are we going to fix this? Well, so we take some raw umber, and now we're just going to move it out. Now, this is fast and loose, so uh, by loose, meaning, uh, you know, we're not going into great detail at all. By fast, that meaning that we're not really drying it. We're just going along with it. Uh, so everything's going to get exaggerated, okay? So, for example, okay, now I'm bringing in the cerulean blue by itself. I didn't even mix it with no other colors, okay? And, you know, this is uh, something I, I've done it before, but I, you know... Ponds are are not blue like that, but it's what I what I was getting at earlier. It's the whole idea of exaggeration to get a point through in what we're doing, <clears throat> and to enjoy the process. It's a learning process. Okay, so I see. I could have easily painted it blue first and waited for it to dry. Or took a hair blower for it to dry it down. There's a few different ways I could have made the color of this pond. But this is fast and loose. And I want to wanted to point out the exaggerations. So we have our dock. Now, here's some more yellow ochre. And... You know, I've used, you've seen in some of my pre previous videos, I like using yellow ochre for, like, dry grass and weeds uh, in regards to being outdoors. Um, but I, I use them for other things, too. Okay, so we have our foreground with dry grass. I'll just call it dry grass. You can call it weeds or whatever. Take your card, scrape them up. Just a little here and there. There we go. Like that. And some in the background. Okay. Now we got our little fisher fishing figure out there. It looks like he's in the middle of the lake, <laughs> in the little, just in the middle of the pond. Well, he is. That's that's part of the exaggeration part here. So here comes some of the Chinese white. You just you know wherever you might you think you might see a little bit of uh, movement in the water. Okay, like. On the edges, you'll see movement sometimes. Just put a little bit of white in there. Maybe uh, wind's blowing the water. So a little bit around the pier dock. You know, around um, our figure. You know, maybe he's moving and the water's moving, so it's a little bit more wider. 
And while we got it on there, let's make uh, these clouds. Uh, the, instead of, you know, keeping the paper, using the white from the paper, the Chinese white got a little bit muddy, so it makes it look more like a storm cloud almost. A little bit more blue in there. The original sky. So work on it like this. Uh, and I, I like doing this too. But we need to give him his straw hat isn't really given his uh, isn't defining his head um, or her head. Now in figures that are like this normally uh, they would just be a little shade of a color. So with the yellow ochre I'm kind of giving this dock a little bit more of a color. I want to keep that brown in there but I kind of want to mix it up. Um, just to give an idea, you know, I didn't really want just, I, I know it's supposed to be fast and loose. Another thing about painting is, uh, to know when to quit. And I'm one of those people that have problems with that, you know, I, I will paint until I just, I ruined the whole thing, right? But it's, I mean, it's okay. Over time, we learn. And uh, sometimes they come out really good, and sometimes you ruin them that way. So sometimes you got to know when to stop. So let's try this here with a little liner, liner brush. Just to kind of give a little bit of that water around him. He's moved. Maybe the wind is blowing too, so some there by the dock, just to, I mean, and this is, you know, exaggeration, you know. Right there where the line went in, maybe it just went in, um, just to give an idea. Okay. Maybe something by the tree. Yeah, like right there would be fine. Just a little bit. Okay. Let's bring out some green. Just regular green. You can use different kinds of green. It's up to you. Um, first, I want to put in is a little raw umber. Just just a little dot above the red. Just his straw hat didn't come out it, like I wanted it to, but that's fine. That's I mean this is a a, a practice. Uh, it's just enjoying, you know, enjoying the moment, right? So with these fan brushes, uh, turkey tail brushes, yeah. Some green in there. Just like that. Yeah, some in the back, or in the foreground, I mean, and... Uh, and this is where I really love this lemon yellow. Look at this. I mean, it makes those, that grass, like, like if the sun is really coming down on that grass. You know, that's some healthy grass there. Anyways, I have to go. Thank you so much for viewing our, our, <clears throat> the A&O Life with John. Please come back later.